Hi everyone, Jackie Edwards here again for Live at Lunchtime. Hope you're all doing well on another beautiful sunny day. I was just out for another walk. I'll see if I can show you around. I'm just sitting at the church. There's a couple of sheep watching me at the moment. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, yep. So, anyways, that's the only people I have for an audience, hopefully. Um, so, hopefully you're doing well. Well, thank you for joining in. Um... Today I wanted to talk about tenant deposits. So I've been getting quite a few and I've seen some questions on some forums about tenancy deposits and whether you should take them or not. So first of all, um, when I first got started, I took a tenant deposit from all of my tenants. So it was normally a month's rent and they'd pay that up front. And I always registered that in one of the tenancy deposit schemes. So if you're doing rent to rent, you need to register as an agent with one of those schemes because you're not the property owner so you register it as an agent. They all need to be registered, all deposits, within 30 days. Now there's lots of people that try to do quite clever things so they don't have to call a deposit and they don't have to register it. Um, I would say if you're taking you know, an extra month in advance, anything like that, it, it really is a deposit and you should be registering it. So in the beginning, again, we took deposits from all of our tenants generally a month. Sometimes if I wanted a room to go more quickly, I'd do a special maybe half off, you know, no deposit type offer. Um, but as a general rule, we took a deposit from all of our tenants. Now, um, moving forward about two and a half, nearly three years on, we take a lot less de uh, deposits. So our tenants are young professionals. We do quite thorough referencing. They're all working. They're all living in Oxford. So in general, we haven't had any problems with our tenants. We have never held anybody's deposit back. And, you know, we've never had any major damage. We've never had tenants leave, um, we, I mean, we have had a few tenants leave early, but we've generally been able to replace them quite quickly. So we haven't had massive voids or anything. So we don't, because of all the admin for the deposits, I'm a big fan of not doing admin and I'm not very good at it. So because you have to register the deposit within 30 days, you have to issue them all of the paperwork, the tenant. Then when they roll onto kind of the periodic tenancy, you have to issue them the paperwork again and you have to give them, you know, um, unprotect the deposit at the end of the tenancy. It's quite a lot of paperwork. I don't really enjoy doing it. So kind of the cost benefit analysis, because we've never had any deposits that we've kept from any tenants, I made that decision in our business. Oops, hopefully it's not stuttering too much. I've made the decision in our business that we don't have to take deposits for all of our tenants. So our tenants pay a 200 pound admin fee up front to reserve the room. Then within seven days, they need to pay the full first month's rent. And then it's up to kind of my letting manager to decide, does she want to take a deposit? Doesn't she want to? So sometimes it's a full month, sometimes it's less. Um, it's all kind of how it's feeling to be able to sell that room. And so, yeah, sometimes there's no deposit at all, which is getting to be the more likely case now. Um, I would say don't do this unless you've got some kind of history behind you. You know that you don't won't have very many issues. Um, also, we only do this if they fully pass the referencing. So if they have a job that meets the minimum income criteria and um, ideally they'd have a guarantor as well, but not always. And they've got a good previous letting ref. Um, letting agent uh, reference. So if they don't pass the credit check, then we would take a deposit. If they can't pay a deposit, then they need a guarantor, or generally we'd want a guarantor and a deposit if they can't pass the references on their own. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas. I would suggest if you're just getting started, always take a deposit um, and just make sure you're up on the rules on how to register them. If you have some experience and you haven't had any issues with tenants, you've never take it, kept anybody's deposit, then you can start to think and maybe start to play around a little bit with whether you need to take deposits all the time or whether you don't. So hopefully that's helped. I am going to continue my walk now in the beautiful sunshine and I will see you again tomorrow for Live at Lunchtime.